Hey boss, I got my coupons ready. What happened to those? Did a did an alligator get a hold of them? What's wrong with them? What's wrong with them? I'm sorry, bud. We got to do that one again. We got to get this thing right. Welcome back to the channel, everyone. We're back at PWA in Katy, Texas, and they got students busy at work inside, working on their well test and prepping bin test coupons. And that's what we want to talk about today is the proper way to prep your bin straps. If you don't prep your bin straps right, you could even fail your well test without even bending a strap because you didn't do your due diligence in learning how to properly prep your straps. Let's go through how they need to look, what needs to be talked about so that you don't mess up on a test on just the straps. Now we're gonna go ahead and get Cody lined out. He's got a new coupon set up. We made sure that he had the appropriate length. We gotta have at least eight inches between the two coupons or it doesn't fit in the bender and it doesn't meet the parameters of the well test. Cody's got a 6010, he's gonna put a bead in. We're also gonna be using this Donaldson fume extractor right over the top. All that good stuff and capping this sucker. Look at her go. Get this thing lined out. It's time for a montage. Until we get it right. Until we get it right. Look at that thing, that thing sucks. All right, you ever laid one of these out? No, sir. All right, so this is like a real typical way of laying out a, a test plate. There's no three coupons, there's only two because we're gonna do one cap and one root bin, okay? So we measure the plate, it's eight inches long, which is real typical for a lot of test plates. So we mark the center first. So we'll go ahead and mark the center, and we can take our square, hopefully we cut these square enough, and then we're gonna go about laying this out. Code tells you a certain way it's gotta be where the bin straps have to come from. So you have to pull them from there. You can't just pick where you want to pull these straps. So we got measure center first and we're at four inches and we measure an inch over, okay? So that inch right there is our starting point. And then an inch and a half is the width of coupon that we're gonna need. So we start again, measure an inch over and then we measure an inch and a half. Okay, and we make all of our marks, okay? This inch and a half is gonna be the coupon that we're using. Now, depending on what code it is, it might be in a one inch strap or, or a uh, inch and a half, or if it's a nick break, there might be a, a thinner spot, but we'll get into all that later. But right now, this is where we wanna lay it out. And we really wanna make sure these are square, okay? Gotta make sure that our lines are square. That really helps too. And all this mess that we're doing with the chalk is not ideal. Try to make sure you have a nice sharp chalk. Do we get to pick which one's the root and which one's the cap? Not typically. Depends on your in inspector. Like right here, there's a tie-in right here. Okay, and right here. So really, if I wanted to pick one or the other, I'd probably pick that one. But if I wanted to be an asshole that day, I might would try to see if I could bust you right here. Now, that it might be up to the inspector, it might be up to you. But we'll go ahead and call this one our cap. And this one will be our root. So we want to keep those. We do not want this piece, this piece, this piece, or this piece. We just want those two. So now we're gonna take it over to the torch. Now my dude, these things gotta stay an inch and a half. What happens if we make them skinnier than an inch and a half? Anywhere, especially the weld zone. You're, you're disqualified. Okay. You're out of parameters. So if you suck with a cutting torch, stay way outside that line and then grind to that line to make it a nice clean edge, right? We don't want any choppy edges, no teeth marks, no alligator bites straight cuts. Some places will make you actually cut your straps and some places won't. They'll just take it from here and you'll be good. One thing that I always thought that was ridiculous was students taking their plate after they just weld it and then they're like, I got to let it cool off before I lay it out or I've got to let it cool off before I take it over there and grind my straps. Work on these straps while they're hot. Obviously don't touch them because they're freaking hot, but work on them while they're hot. It's better for the steel to do it that way uh, and it just make sure you got your cuts good. Cut on the right side of the line. Don't Go under that inch and a half. So work on everything while it's hot and don't burn up your little mitt. That B-roll is gonna be sexy. All right, dude, looking good. We got them cut. I like how you stayed. You can still see your chalk line. That's how we know we haven't got past that inch and a half. Are you gonna go quench them now? Yeah. <laughs> you know you don't quench them. Never cool your metal off. Even though mild steel isn't really hardenable, it'll still shock it and we're gonna really put it through some stuff. 
So if you are in a hurry to cool them off, which we're not in a hurry, we're actually gonna grind them now while they're, while they're hot. We're definitely gonna clean up the sides first. That's where we like it, but we're gonna grind down to that line. Always need a clamp or a vise. Don't try to, don't try to freehand this stuff. We wanna make sure we get everything nice and clean. So basically we're just trying to grind out those marks, but without taking away from the thickness. If you notice that you're getting to that line and you're gonna take away from the width, stop grinding and then you just deal with what you have there. That it's gotta stay that way, but you got a good cut. So now what about the angle, the end here? Don't leave it alone. Leave that alone, just kind of get touch it with a grinder. This they're not gonna worry about. It's closer to this weld zone that they're gonna get a lot more critical about what you did. One thing to be careful of, see this spot right here, how it's got that bump? Yeah. It, that grinder wants to dig right there and that's right next to your weld. So you gotta be careful when you're going across that, that you don't dip into that at all. Otherwise you're taking away from that width in that critical spot. So make sure that you just single strokes. You got all the, the roughness out. I would leave that alone until you get a, a flap disc. So go ahead and flip it over to the other side. Also you see you got a little bit of a uh, kind of a beveled edge where it's higher on that side. Square it off as you cut too. But don't take too much material away. You have, you have plenty, plenty there. Right there. See that? Like that's, that's something in the well, but we can't dig after it. We can't just take our grinder and just start digging after it until we see that that little thing disappears. But why not? That's just not how it works. You're gonna be taking and taking that thickness out and now you, you've failed your bin test oh. because you're, you dug after something that you thought was a boo-boo. It may very well be a boo-boo and we're gonna do our best to kind of blend it. But if it, if, Getting it too far is gonna take away too much material, then we have to just leave it there. Now grinding your strap, bro. Like when it comes to grinding off the cap, we cannot get to the base material. We wanna to get to the base material, but not dig into it. We don't want any base metal reduction. You can grind it this way, that way, whatever which way you want to remove this cap. But when you're getting ready to finish, you make sure that all your grinder marks are going across that weld. A lot of people wanna grind this way because it just seems easier. You can grind that way just to get that off but you gotta make sure your grinder marks are going across the weld and you don't need to grind way out here. That doesn't, you don't need to. You just gotta take down the weld. I actually like taking the grinder on its side because it just removes metal really fast. You just gotta know when to stop and then switch it sideways. It's flattened up, but it's not taken down to the base metal. So we're gonna use our flap wheel to get this far. We're gonna do that for our cap and for our root, we're gonna grind it down to that point. So we'll hog down the meat of it and then we'll switch it out to a flap wheel. I like an aggressive flap. This one's like a, I don't know, I think an 80 grit. I usually run a 60. So you wanna blend it down to the base metal and if you see a spot, you can chase it a little bit. You can't gouge into it. So when you see something like that, we're gonna get rid of it and make sure it's gone. But if I have to dig in and it gets deeper and deeper, we gotta stop. There's eventually a stop. It's very important that you put a radius on the side of this, okay? If you leave a sharp edge, it's easier to tear. You skip this step, it may be what fails you. You might've had a great weld, but because you didn't put a radius on this or a little round spot to take that sharp edge away, it could tear it right there. This also really shouldn't take forever, guys. Six inches of weld total, it's not gonna, it shouldn't take you all day to grind your bin strap, okay? There's a little bit more involved. It's gonna be a little bit more meticulous, but do the dang thing. You don't gotta wait, let it cool. Get you something to hold on to it and get the hogging. Now I know that we've pretty much already finish both of these straps, but how I remember, you see how we don't have an R or a, or a C to remember which one's a cap, which one's a root. I like to take that grinder and I put a little tiny notch at the very end where nothing really matters on my root one. So put, take that grinder and put you a little, like just a little mark, little notch. But that little notch will let me remember that this is my root. 
So at least I picked and I'll try to tell the inspector, whoever it is, or if, wherever we're at, which one's my root and which one's my cap. But these things are freaking spit shine, brother. Those look good. Thank you. So now that these are done, where are we gonna do? Quench them? Bend them. No, nah, we gotta wait till they're all the way cooled off. We can't, it's almost like cheating. Like, that's fine. That's actually the perfect place for that. Leave it on the ground. The concrete, it's gonna suck up some of that heat. I'll even separate them. And if I am in a hurry, then I'll put some, put a fan on them or something so they cool off a little faster. But we can't bend them hot and we don't wanna quench them. Bending them hot is supposed to be easier to bend and bending them cold will potentially make them fail. This is the rule. If you wanna make sure they're ready, put that up to your cheek and tell me if, if you can hold it to your cheek, then you can bend it. No, yeah. That one's good. That one's good. Try that one again? Nah, I'm good. Nah, okay, not ready. That is like two solid pieces of steel almost. You almost can't tell. Look at where you started, bro. Look at that. Oh, Look yeah. at that. Big improvement. Big improvement. Big improvement. Wow. Whose eyeballs did you use to do this one? I think I had them closed, actually. <laughs> you don't mind bending one of these student straps, huh? Let's do it. Instructor Jada here giving some quick inspection of the straps to make sure they fit code, right? You like them? They look good? Are they smoother than a baby's bahuki? They are. They're really nice, right? So now we'll see if they bend when this compressor kicks on and catches up. We'll see if you made, a, made a, uh, it worth a dang. The slowest bender ever. Dude, for real. We gotta do four of them. Dude, there's so much suspense. So much suspense in that bend right there. All the way to the tippy top with it. All right, we got the root bent. We'll take a we'll take a peek at that in a second. Let's get the cap. This is in a there. brand new jack too. Is it? Yeah. Oh, it's moving now. This is the cap on the left. You see a couple little stress marks where they like something is in there, but it didn't open to the surface, so nothing counts. Right, so we got the cap as clean as a whistle. Right, so that's a pass. Now a root pass, on the other hand, we've got one little, two little, potentially three little specks there. Now we would take those specks and we would add them up and if they don't add up to whatever the tolerance is for whatever code we're welding to, then you're it's still a pass. I would say for like D11, this is a pass. For your first one ever, you got a long ways to go, brother, but that's, that's awesome. Well, there you have it, bro. That's it, that's a bend test and that's the proper way. You've done an excellent job on this. That's, again, that's your first go at 6010-7018-3G. Yes, sir. Here, here at Precision Welding yes, Academy. Sir. You've only been doing open roots, just the, just the root practice. Yes, sir. Never finished one out. Nope. Well, now you go tell Scott that you're ready to move on. That, I'd say, just like any other instructor though, they're probably gonna tell you, do it again. Do it again. <laughs> do it again until you're blue in the face. Weld until you hate it. Hey, thanks for watching guys. I hope this helped learn how you Prep a bin strap properly. You learned something? Yes, sir. Woohoo!